Inside Morrillhay Mall, a bench and two potted trees cover up what was once the Game Sip store owned by James Beaudry. It shut down in April after a police investigation that lasted half a year. Digging through hundreds of pages of police reports spanning several cities and two states, we discovered disturbing new information about the 440-pound father and things he allegedly did to three of his children, including incidents that allegedly happened right here in a privately owned mall yet very public place. Des Moines police first heard about Beaudry on October 19, 2011, when one of his children ran away. A social worker reports the child hopped a Greyhound bus to Minnesota and spilled a story to her there. The child was escaping a beating in the back of the store, 100 wax with a broom handle on her bare bottom. The child says James Beaudry just kept whacking, and even several days later, social workers saw bruises. In March, James Beaudry pled guilty to simple assault in the case. A judge ordered him to pay a $65 fine and to take parenting classes. As he was in and out of Polk County Court on that charge, Beaudry was allegedly doing even worse things to three of his nine children. On November 25, 2011, one child claims James Beaudry raped her at the Valley West Inn in West Des Moines, where the family of 11 stayed in one room. The child sought help the next day at Merlehay Mall. There was an allegation that was made to the security at Merlehay Mall. A security officer escorted the young woman to our security office and followed procedure and called the Des Moines Police Department. The Des Moines Police Department came and interviewed the young woman. It's our policy and procedure, and it is certainly the policy and procedure of the Des Moines Police Department that our security officers are not present during any um, interviews of, you know, of any nature. Des Moines Police then alerted West Des Moines Police because that's the city where the alleged assault occurred. West Des Moines detectives then came to interview the child in the mall security office. Merle Mall initially told us back in April they had, quote, no knowledge of alleged events, and they stand by that today. That doesn't match what's in police reports and what Des Moines Police Sergeant Chris Scott told us yesterday. A report was made to a security guard at um, Merle Mall that she had been sexually assaulted by her father. Merle Mall says that part didn't show up in their security report, and neither did the October 18th beating that happened in the back of the store. Unless the police inform us of it, that's correct. I mean, it's unfortunately the case, but that is in fact correct. You just get kind of a, a weird feeling every time you leave, like something's just out of place or not with the norm of other game stores. Mike Hurt frequented GameSip and said a child was always the cashier. That child told a social worker she worked 70 hours a week there. It's where the Beaudry's organized opportunities for people to come play games in the back of the store. The store oftentimes advertised to Yu-Gi-Oh! as a game which is predominantly played by young teens. And that's oftentimes who I saw in the back. This January 30th police report shows the same child who was beaten in the back of the store also reports an attempted rape there. She said her father pushed her into a recliner and tried to remove her clothes, but luckily she got away. In all, police say there were eight instances of sex abuse that happened between October 1st of last year and February 24th of this year, but charges weren't brought until April. Beaudry wasn't ordered to stay away from children until May 7th. We often want to believe that this could be reported and, and we can solve it, you know, in an hour, like on TV. Well, it's just not the way it happens. It, it does take a lot of time. They say complicating matters was mom, Kia Beaudry, who repeatedly told police one of her children had mental problems. That child, police say, changed her story several times. There is nothing fast about it. Um, it was just a matter of cooperating and sorting through what are the real facts, given the fact that we haven't always had the truth before. What's the truth now? It's, it is very complex. Unfortunately, it may well have confirmed what her father may have told her, that no one will believe you, um, that people will wonder about you and wonder about your mental health. And so that's... It's very sad and discouraging. Beth Barnhill is the executive director for the Iowa Coalition Against Sexual Assault. She says it is normal for a victim of repeated sexual abuse to remember new things weeks or even months after an attack. That unfortunately gets used to discredit victims at times because stories do change um, as they remember things or sometimes as a result of the fear they're experiencing. Police report all nine children are now safe in foster homes and shelters here in Des Moines. They say that's what it took to get to the truth about James Beaudry. It wasn't towards the very end where all the kids were removed, and I think that's when they finally started to get all the facts and the puzzle pieces put together to say, 
this is the problem, we, we've got to do something, we've got to do it now. Uh, up to that point, uh, certainly concerns, but uh, we don't want to be uh, premature. We want to uh, uh, make sure that when we do it, we do it, we do it right. From October through February, this pile of police reports shows a girl crying out for help after she escaped a brutal beating in the back of the Game Sip store at Merle Hay Mall that left green and purple bruises for several days. She escaped to Minnesota and told a social worker there she was, quote, scared to go back home, just felt safer up here, and just wanted to be placed in a safe home. Minnesota social workers put her in a shelter there, then moved her to an Iowa shelter. The girl was away from her family for three weeks, but eventually ended up back in the Merle Hay Mall store, where the family of 11 was living and back with the father she feared. By January, this report details how she ran away again, saying her father had raped her. She told police to, quote, check her into a shelter, and they did. But when she found out she was headed back home a couple days later, the girl ran away from the shelter, telling workers she was scared to go back to her father. It doesn't matter necessarily the number of complaints. It depends on the evidence that we gather on each complaint. While Vern Armstrong, a DHS administrator, won't talk about the evidence in this case, police reports indicate few people believed what the girl was saying. We don't just remove a child because the child says, I don't want to be here anymore. It really depends on the evidence that we get. And, and what they tell us, though, is really key. We have 20 business days to finish a, a child abuse assessment. We go out and see the child right away, and we perform a safety assessment and determine um, what the level of risk is to the child right then. Police reports reveal that in October, officers visited Merle Hay Mall and talked with four of the nine Beaudry children. All four of them reported physical abuse, but charges weren't brought until April and the children remained with their father. Why not just remove them to be safe? Until the investigation is complete, why not just remove them? Um, we get tens of thousands of reports every year. It turns out that only about a third of those end up being founded. If we removed every child that we went out and investigated on, um, we would be unnecessarily harming children and families. 